Good evening aspirants, welcome to the Hindu News Analysis by Shankara Ace Academy for the date 17th of February 2022. These are the list of articles we will be discussing today. Actually there is a small clarification regarding my last session. Actually while discussing about socio-economic and caste census, I said 1931 but I wrote 1937. Actually the socio-economic and caste census was carried out in 1931 only, it is not 1937. Uh, just make that change okay now let us start our discussion take a look at this article in this article the chief justice of india mr ramana mentioned that thousands of litigants are waiting for justice see many cases were adjourned for months and there is no manpower to form benches to adjudicate these cases according to the article it is said that supreme court has given two weeks time for the government to make appointments to all the tribunals this is the crux of the article here. Since prelims is nearing, in this context, let us revise about the constitutional provisions for the tribunals. See, in our constitution, the article 323A deals with the provisions of administrative tribunal. See, the parliament may by law provide for the adjudication or trial by administrative tribunals of disputes and complaints with respect to recruitment and conditions of service of persons appointment in public service or post, which are in connection with the affairs of the union or of any state or of any local or other authorities within the government of India or under the control of government of India or any corporation owned or controlled by the government. To put it in simple words, the administrative tribunal here is a quasi-judicial body that resolves disputes related to the recruitment and service conditions of persons engaged in public service. The central administrative tribunal is established according to the Article 323A. See, we saw that under Article 323A, the parliament may by law provide for adjudication or trial by administrative tribunals. Such a law made by parliament will have the following provisions. The law provides for the establishment of an administrative tribunal for the union and a separate administrative tribunal for each state or for two or more states. Okay. The law also specifies the jurisdiction, the powers and the authority which may be exercised by each of the said administrative tribunals. The law also provides for the procedure to be followed in such tribunals. See, the law of the parliament may also exclude the jurisdiction of any courts except the jurisdiction of Supreme Court regarding the matters, disputes and complaints which are dealt by these administrative tribunals. Having done with the administrative tribunals under Article 323A, now let us see about Article 323B. See, this article deals with the formation of tribunals for other matters. The main difference between Article 323A and Article 323B is while Article 323A deals with administrative tribunals, Article 323B deals with other type of tribunals like National Green Tribunal, Competition Apply Tribunal, Security Supply Tribunal, etc. The other difference here is that tribunals under Article 323A can be established only by the Parliament. Note that, okay? However, tribunals under Article 323B can be established by both the Parliament and the State Legislature. The last major difference is that under Article 323A, there can be only one tribunal at the center and one for each state or two or more states. But under Article 323B, there can be a hierarchy of tribunals. Okay. See, we saw that Article 323B deals with the formation of tribunals for other matters. The other matters include levy, assessment, collection and enforcement of any tax, foreign exchange, import and export across customs frontier, industrial and labor disputes, land reforms by way of acquisition by the state, sealing on urban property, elections to either house of parliament or house or either house of the state legislature, production, procurement, supply and distribution of foodstuff and such other stuff as the president may by public notification declare to be a essential good and control the price of such goods. Finally, offences against law with respect to any of the matters specified above. See, various other tribunals established for other matters include Income Tax Appellate Tribunal, Customs Exercise and Service Tax Appellate Tribunal, National Green Tribunal, Competition Appellate Tribunal, Securities Appellate Tribunal, Motor Accidents Claim Tribunal, Appellate Tribunal for Foreign Exchange, Cyber Appellate Tribunal, National Highways Tribunal, etc. 
that's all regarding this discussion before concluding let us do a quick recap see this discussion was regarding tribunals in that first we saw about article 323a according to this article the parliament may by law establish administrative tribunals see these are quasi judicial bodies that resolve disputes related to the recruitment and service conditions of persons engaged in public service then we saw about article 323b see we saw that while article 323a deals with the administrative tribunals article 323b deals with all types of tribunals okay we also saw some difference between article 323a and article 323b the major difference here is that tribunals under article 323a can be established only by the parliament however tribunals under article 323b can be established by both the parliament and the state legislature Next, we saw that under Article 323A, there can be only one tribunal at the centre and one for each state or two or more states. But under Article 323B, there can be a hierarchy of tribunals. That's all regarding this discussion. With this, let us move on to the next news article. Take a look at this news article. See, this news article talks about an interesting concept known as negative liberty. See everyone today defends freedom like freedom to speak freedom to move the freedom to act the freedom to eat the freedom to practice any religion etc but exactly what is freedom a term that scholars have been redefined and examined countless times actually mean to know this news article takes an example from Isaiah Berlin's seminal essay published in 1958 titled the two concepts of liberty Isaiah Berlin is a British philosopher and a historian of ideas Isaiah Berlin was noted for his writings on political philosophy and the concept of liberty and this particular essay speaks broadly of two senses of freedom so this is the crux of the news article in this background let us brush through some of the important points mentioned in this article see this article is very important we know in recent times the essay papers have become more and more philosophical and abstract in nature so in the essay paper to differentiate your answer from your fellow aspirants you have to quote some philosophers you have to convince the evaluator that you wrote a well read essay and you have a wide knowledge this is where this discussion comes in you can note down the points we are about to discuss and you can try to use it in your essay you can also use the points we are going to discuss in your ethics paper also okay look at this essay question from 2019 let me read it out first best for an individual is not necessarily best for a society see this essay can be approached as a general studies paper to question also okay and if you write like that your essay will be very normal and very mediocre but instead in your essay if you start by talking about the concepts of liberty by isaiah berlin your paper will immediately get the attention of the evaluator okay so even if you write a very normal essay since you got the evaluator's attention already you will definitely get more marks so listen to the discussion very carefully okay before going into today's discussion the syllabus relevant to this article is highlighted here for your reference please go through it now let us start our discussion As I already said the essay titled Two Concepts of Liberty written by Isaiah Berlin broadly speaks about two senses of freedom first is what he calls negative liberty this negative liberty revolves around the existence of private sphere okay in this private sphere the individual can do as he or she pleases without any interference interference here means freedom from interference of other individuals communities the state or up or oppressive societal forces in other words the individual is free of any external barriers or constraints the second is what he calls positive liberty see it refers to the act of taking control over one's life and realizing its fundamental purposes negative liberty and positive liberty are not only two types of liberty they are frequently viewed as competing and conflicting interpretation of the concept of liberty itself see this competing interpretation results in significant social and political implication now to understand the concept better let us see an example let us assume a woman named devi and this woman works in chennai and she wants to visit her family which is living in a village in bihar under a negative conception of liberty devi could travel from chennai to her village in bihar without anyone stopping her for any reason if someone like devi's relatives or neighbors or the government prevented her from traveling that would amount to a violation of her negative liberty okay but imagine this 
what is devi is poor and she cannot afford a plane ticket or a train ticket okay would that be a violation of negative liberty no but her capacity to travel is hindered by her poverty so from the standpoint of positive liberty which is the ability to take control of one's own life and realize its fundamental purposes in this scenario devi is not free that is the poverty that devi faces restricts her positive liberty now i hope you got a basic understanding about positive liberty and negative liberty with this example now moving on see according to berlin from the previous example devi's failure to fulfill a specific goal in this case travel would not be appropriately defined as a lack of freedom for this let us expand on the example that we discussed okay first let us consider the society that devi is in is a egalitarian one that is there is opportunity for everyone everyone has equal access to education and economic opportunity in such a society if devi is poor it is her own individual fault okay so in this scenario that is in a perfect egalitarian society devi's failure to travel does not amount to lack of freedom now consider alternatively devi is living in a highly unequal society in this unequal society some people have access to quality education and economic opportunity in this case devi's poverty is not due to her own fault and her poverty is just a reflection of the inequality in the society okay so in this case that is in a highly unequal society where the poverty of devi is due to social construct of the society then devi's failure to travel amounts to lack of freedom in other words berlin says the use of the term freedom depends on a particular social and economic theory about the causes of poverty or weakness that is if the cause of poverty is due to individual choices then freedom is not affected but if the cause of poverty is due to social reasons then freedom is affected hope you guys understand the difference now let's move on see political left that is the people who are leaning towards communism and socialism support positive liberty on the other hand the political right that is right wing nationalist and libertarians support the idea of negative liberty now why are we discussing about positive liberty and negative liberty and who support positive liberty and who support negative liberty it is because the notion of positive and negative liberty broadly determine how the governments function okay see for example some government may cut spending on government programs while other governments may increase the provision of government services so that the poor and the marginalized can have better access to food and resources they increase the provision of government services by taxing other citizens okay if the government does the later that is the government taxes the people and use the money to provide subsidized food for others it means that it is cutting down on the economic freedom of some class of citizens in order for others to access certain goods and services and to have a certain amount of economic freedom and this is where some of the people have a problem with positive liberty in its practical sense okay Berlin also explains in the essay how positive liberty has been abused by tyrannies especially by the Soviet Union according to him the regime in the Soviet Union just portrayed its brutal governance as a empowerment of the people see you can add mao's china and pol pot's cambodia to the list also see mao's great leap forward economic policy which focused on increasing positive liberty resulted in 15 to 55 million deaths while pol pot's efforts to achieve positive liberty in cambodia resulted in cambodian genocide okay so when we keep focusing only on positive liberty it will not result in a positive outcome in every sense okay now moving on see on the other hand in a society with negative freedom everyone is freer because no one's freedom is compromised but early english philosophers believed that negative freedom could lead to social chaos Imagine having freedom to do whatever you can in whatever way you pleased. This could lead to total chaos. For this, let us consider there is no traffic light or no traffic police in the roads. In this case, the drivers will have complete freedom. That is, they have full negative liberty. But this does not result in positive outcome. But does this result in positive outcome? A big no because if there is no traffic light or no traffic police our roads will be in complete chaos. So this is why early English philosophers believed that negative freedom could lead to social chaos. 
in addition to this we note that there is no limit to human wants and if the human beings are allowed to achieve anything they want the strong will suppress the weak this is why the area of men's action is often restricted by law see so far we saw what is positive and negative liberty we also saw some of the examples of what will happen when government focus only on positive liberty in food fledge and we also some of the example of what will happen if government only focuses on negative liberty in full fledge now let us know how a ideal freedom should be see for example libertarians in england and france argued that there should be a certain minimum area of personal freedom which must on no account be violated if such personal freedom is violated then the individual will find himself in a space that is too small for him to even develop the basic capabilities for himself so the libertarians of england and france suggested that there should be some line between public activity and private life see in case of india to protect this personal freedom we have part 3 of the constitution that is the fundamental rights but where do we draw the line according to berlin no man's behavior is fully private that it does not interfere with the life of others in any way he noted that freedom for a pike is death for the minnows here pike is a large carnivorous predatory fish and minnow is a smaller fish that the pike feeds on so if the pike has full freedom all the minnows will be eaten up that is if there is complete absolute freedom the strong will decimate the weak so he argued that some people's freedom must sometimes be limited in order to ensure the freedom of others so negative liberty must be restricted for the sake of other values such as equality and justice so to conclude according to isaiah berlin there must be a limitation in negative liberty in order to ensure freedom for others and remember this is not to say negative liberty is not important see imagine this there is a situation where powerful religious organization caste organization or even the governments are keen on controlling every aspects of the people's life like who to marry what kind of family to lead what opinion to hold and even what to eat in such a case negative freedom is a very valuable asset so negative liberty and positive liberty must be properly balanced by the government okay that's all regarding this news article now let us do a quick recap see in this discussion first we saw the difference between positive liberty and negative liberty with the example of miss devi then we saw why poverty at all time does not result in restricting positive liberty then we saw the ill effects of focusing entirely on positive liberty and then we saw the ill effects of focusing entirely on negative liberty finally we concluded by saying that why positive and negative liberty must be balanced this is all regarding this discussion Okay with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article look at these two news articles see these two news articles talks about job aspirants being duped by middlemen according to the first article the central crime branch has arrested four person it is found that the accused collected about 70 lakh from 16 candidates promising them to get jobs at chennai airport and other central establishments It is also found that they conducted fake interviews and even issued fake appointment orders also. So, the commissioner of police said that the public should not fall prey to the designs of fraudsters by giving money to them. He also clarified that government establishments or private entities do not give jobs on receiving money from any job aspirant. And the second article here talks about fraud regarding promising jobs under sports quota in southern railways. So, this is the crux of the news articles given here. See, we have to understand why such incidents are happening first. There are several reasons to it. One is the lack of job opportunities. See, we all know India is currently in the face of demographic dividend. That is, we have a very high youth population. because of this high youth population there is a mismatch in the number of jobs available and the number of working age persons this leads to several persons to involve in fraud activities like those mentioned in the article because people are desperate to get job other important reason is the lack of skill set needed for the jobs that are available there is a mismatch here also jobs are available but person with the required skill sets are not available So to address these two major issues government has taken many steps and has implemented many schemes in this discussion let us see some of the schemes related to employment generation and skill development okay 
ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஸ்கீம் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி இஸ் பிரதான் மந்திரி ஆர் பிரைம் மினிஸ்டர்ஸ் எம்ப்ளாய்மெண்ட் ஜெனரேஷன் ப்ரோக்ராம் the scheme is a composition of two schemes prime ministers rozgar yojana and rural employment generation program it is a credit linked subsidy program which aims at generating employment opportunities through establishment of micro enterprises in both rural as well as urban areas the objective of the scheme is to provide continuous and sustainable employment the scheme focuses on traditional artisans and unemployed youth in both rural and urban areas of the country The next scheme that we are going to see is the infamous Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme. The mandate of Mandrega is to provide at least 100 days of guaranteed wage employment in a financial year to every rural household whose adult member volunteers to do unskilled manual work. Okay? The next one we are going to see is Pradhan Mandri Mudra Yojana. See this scheme was initiated by the government for facilitating self-employment. under the pradhan mandri mudra yojana collateral free loans up to 10 lakhs are extended to the non corporate non farm small and micro business enterprises and to individuals to enable them to set up and expand their business activities okay see the next one we are going to see is pradhan mandri rozgar purushtan yojana it is a scheme to incentivize employers to generate new job opportunities here the incentive is given by the government which pays the full contribution of employers to the employee pension scheme and employee provident fund in respect to new employees okay see this scheme has a dual benefit where on the one hand the employer is incentivized for increasing the employment base of workers in the establishment and on the other hand a large number of workers will find jobs in such establishment a direct benefit of this scheme is that these new workers will have access to social security benefits of the organized sector finally we have the skill development initiative by the ministry of labor and employment the main aim of this initiative is to provide vocational training to school dropouts existing workers it graduates etc this is done to improve their employability by optimally utilizing the infrastructure available in the government private institutions and industries see in this discussion due to time constraint we have seen only a very few schemes please spend more time and see about the other schemes by the ministry of labor and employment and ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship it will be very useful for you in your main answer okay with this we have come to the end of the discussion before concluding let us do a quick recap see in this discussion we saw some steps taken by the government to increase employment opportunity in our country in that first we saw prime minister's employment generation program this is a composition of two schemes the two schemes are prime minister's rozgar yojana and rural employment generation program prime minister's employment generation program is a credit link subsidy program that aims at generating employment opportunities through establishment of micro enterprises in both urban and rural areas then we saw mandrega see we all know that mandrega's mandate is to provide at least 100 days of guaranteed wage employment to all adult members of the rural households then we saw about pradhan mandri mudra yojana pradhan mandri mudra yojana aims at providing self employment opportunities by providing collateral free loans finally we saw about pradhan mandri rozgar purushtan yojana in this the government pays the full contribution of the employer to the employee pension scheme and employee provident fund this is done to incentivize the employer to generate new job opportunity okay this is all regarding this discussion now let us move on to the next news article now have a look at this news article see this news article talks about the proposed away from reactor nuclear spent fuel storage for the units of the kudankulam nuclear power plant in tirunelveli district tamil nadu According to the article the AADMK coordinator has urged the chief minister to take steps to stop the project this is because according to him if such a facility is built nuclear waste from other states might be deposited in kudamkulam in the future so in this context let us quickly go through the radioactive waste management scenario in india firstly what is an away from reactor nuclear spent fuel storage The away from reactor storage is a spent fuel storage outside of a reactor site boundary. It mainly involves receiving and temporarily storing irradiated fuel from a number of nuclear power reactors. Here in this image you can see how a nuclear spent fuel storage looks like. 
spent fuel here is simply a nuclear fuel that has been irradiated in a nuclear reactor to a point that it can no longer sustain a nuclear chain reaction. Why should we store these spent fuels? See, even though the spent fuels can no longer sustain a nuclear chain reaction, they are highly radioactive. The most highly radioactive fuel rods are those that are recently removed from a reactor. This is why we store spent fuels because of the radioactive potential. See, we store the spent fuels in water because water is a good conductor of both radiation shielding and cooling. So, the fuel is stored at the bottom of a pool for a couple of decades until it's inert enough to be moved into dry casks. See, dry cask storage allows spent fuels that has already been cooled in the spent fuel pool for at least one year to be surrounded by inert gas inside a container called a cask. Okay? Now, talking about waste management, see, the management of radiation emitting radioactive material is a matter of concern because public acceptance of nuclear energy largely depends on the public assurance of safe management of nuclear waste. Okay? See, initially, nuclear energy was hailed as a non-polluting way for generating electricity. Later on, it was realized that the use of nuclear energy has two very serious inherent problems. The first is accidental leakage, as it occurred in the Three Mile Island incident and the Chernobyl incident. And the second is safe disposal of radioactive waste. Radiation that is given off by nuclear waste is extremely damaging to organism because it causes mutations at a very high rate. At high doses, nuclear radiation is lethal, but at low doses, it creates various disorders, the most frequent one being cancer. Therefore, nuclear waste is an extremely potent pollutant and has to be dealt with utmost caution. It has been recommended that storage of nuclear waste after sufficient pretreatment should be done in suitable shielded container buried within the rocks about 500 meters deep below the Earth's surface. However, this method of disposal is meeting stiff opposition from the public. Okay, this is regarding this discussion. Before concluding, let us do a quick recap. In this discussion, first we saw what is away from reactor nuclear spent fuel storage. The away from reactor storage is a spent fuel storage outside of a nuclear reactor site. Okay, in this storage, the spent fuel is stored at a bottom of a water pool. Here, spent fuel is simply a nuclear fuel that has been irradiated in a nuclear reactor to a point that it can no longer sustain a chain nuclear reaction. After spending some time at the bottom of the pool, the spent fuel is then stored in a dry cask. The dry cask here is a container that holds the nuclear fuel and surrounds it by an inert gas. Finally, this dry cask containers are buried within the rocks about 500 meters deep below the earth's surface. That's all regarding this discussion. Now let us move on to the next news article. See this colorful article here. It talks about a rare phenomenon that was witnessed in the pristine beaches of Dhanushkodi in the past few days. See, Dhanushkodi is at the southernmost tip of Rameshwaram Island in the Indian Peninsula. And the rare phenomenon was the presence of thousands of crimson rose butterflies on the flowering plants along the beach. According to the article, Dhanushkodi was their stopover for nectaring before they took their ultimate journey towards Sri Lanka, which is around 25 kilometers away from the tip of Dhanushkodi. The observers from the Nature and the Butterfly Society underscored the importance of native beach vegetation in the journey of the butterfly. So, they are of the view that the beaches must be protected in their pristine form. That's all about this article. From the exam point of view, we are going to see about the crimson rose butterflies. First of all, let us see about the physical characteristics. See, crimson rose is a large shallow tail butterfly belonging to the genus Pacleopta of the red-bodied shallowtails. The scientific name is Pacleopta hector. See, both the sexes in this butterfly are similar in pattern, but the females are quite big and dull in coloration. The crimson rose is a black butterfly with two white bands on the forewing and two rows of bright crimson patches on the hindwing. The shape of the crimson patches vary with butterfly to butterfly. The abdomen of the butterfly, the thorax and the head always have crimson patches. These patches are reduced in females. See, the bright color of the butterfly is used as a camouflage to scare its predators and attract its mates. Now let us move on to see the distribution and the habitat of crimson rose butterfly. See, generally the distribution of this butterfly is extensive in South and Southeast Asia. It is found in India and Sri Lanka and possibly the coast of Western Myanmar. 
know that crimson rose visit the flowers of scrubs and some variety of taller herbs in groups okay they are quite dormant and stop over at the flowers near the ground in the early hours of the day and they become very active during the new occasionally we can see this butterfly mud peddling in small numbers here what is mud peddling see butterflies mostly male come together and uptake the sodium and amino acids from the mud dung and urine of animals and the decaying flesh and this sodium and amino acids which the male took from the mud dung and the urine of mammals it transfers it to the female during the mating ritual this behavior is usually called as puddling now moving on see the most striking aspect of the butterfly's behavior is its strong migratory tendencies during the peak of its season several thousands of crimson roses start their migratory journey now let us see the habitat of the butterfly see this butterfly inhabits open vegetation and scrublands it is abundant in the dry zone and occasionally it can be even seen in the wet zone okay see very rarely this butterfly can be seen in the higher elevations also this we can find only during the migratory flight of the butterfly with this let us also see the protection status of the crimson rose see it is recorded as a least concern species by iucn according to iucn a least concern species is a species that has been characterized as not being a focus of species conservation because the specific species is still plentiful in the wild now coming to india in india this species is legally protected under schedule 1 of the wildlife protection act 1972 okay In India, Maharashtra, Uttarakhand, Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu have declared specific species as their state butterflies. Maharashtra has blue moorman, Uttarakhand has common peacock, Karnataka has southern bird wings, Kerala has Malabar banded peacock and Tamil Nadu has Tamil yeoman. See, this is done as an effort to create awareness among the common public to recognize that butterfly as a integral and important part of the nature's ecosystem. This is all about this article discussion. Before concluding, let us do a quick recap. The crimson rose is a shallow-tailed butterfly. Its scientific name is Pachyoptera hector. See, in this species, females are larger and they are less colorized than males. They can be found in India, Sri Lanka and western coast of Myanmar. This species is dormant during the early hours of the day and active during the noon. Occasionally, male members of this butterfly can be seen mud peddling. In case of mud peddling, what they do is they take up sodium and amino acids from the mud, dung and urine of mammals or decaying flesh. See, this species also follow migratory pattern. This butterfly inhabits open vegetation and scrublands and they are abundant in the dry zone, okay? and they are classified as a least concern by iucn and in the wildlife protection act of 1972 they are placed under schedule 1 finally we saw five states and their corresponding state butterflies in that we saw maharashtra which has blue moorman uttarakhand which has common peacock karnataka which has southern bird wings kerala which has malabar banded peacock and tamil nadu which has tamil yeoman with these points in mind let us conclude this discussion See we have come to the end of the news article discussion session now let us take up the practice prelims questions we have five practice prelims questions today let's see them one by one let us take up the first question this is a previous year question from the 2019 prelims paper let me read out the question first in the context of polity which of the following would be accepted as the most appropriate definition of liberty four options are given we have to find which of the following options would be an appropriate definition of liberty see liberty can be seen from two perspectives negative and positive negative liberty is the absence of obstacles barriers or constraint positive liberty is the possibility of acting or the fact of acting in such a way to take control of one's life and realize one's fundamental purpose here let us first take option b that is absence of restraint This covers only a part of the definition of liberty. So option B is wrong. Next let us take option A that is protection against tyranny of political rulers. This is also a partial definition of liberty because option A has a connotation more towards fundamental rights rather than liberty. One can be protected from the tyranny by rule of law but it does not by itself guarantee liberty. See the appropriate definition for liberty is given in option D that is opportunity to develop oneself fully okay since option A B and C are incorrect 
the correct answer that is the appropriate definition for liberty is given in option D that is opportunity to develop oneself fully now let us take up the second question two statements regarding tribunals are given we have to find the correct statements let us take up the first statement administrative tribunals are established by the law of the parliament see this statement is correct we saw in our discussion under article 323a class 1 administrative tribunals are formed by the law of the parliament okay now moving on to the second statement see in india tribunals can be formed to adjudicate disputes related to recruitment and service conditions of persons in public services only okay this statement is incorrect because in india tribunals can be formed for other purposes also that is according to article 323b we saw this also in our discussion since statement 1 is correct and statement 2 is incorrect the correct answer here is option a one only now let us take up the third question this is also a two statement question two statements regarding pradhan mantri roskar purasthan yojana is given we have to find the correct statements let us take up the first statement the implementation agency is the ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship this statement is wrong because the implementing agency for pradhan mantri roskar purasthan yojana is ministry of labor and employment now let us take up the second statement the aim of the scheme is to incentivize employers for providing means for improving skills of the employees this statement is also wrong because the scheme was designed to incentivize employers for generation of new employment where the government of india will be paying the full employers contribution towards epf and eps so the pradhan mantri roskar purasthan yojana is not for skill development since statement 1 and statement 2 are incorrect the correct answer here is option d neither one nor two now let us take up the fourth prelims question this is a three statement question three statements regarding crimson rose butterflies are given we have to find the correct ones let us take up the first statement the species is endemic to india this statement is incorrect because in our discussion we saw that the species can be found in south and southeast asia okay now moving on to the second statement since it comes under insect category it is not protected under wildlife protection act of 1972 This statement is also incorrect because in our discussion we saw that it is protected under schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Moving on to the third statement. These species can migrate across ocean. This statement is correct. We saw in the news article that crimson rose butterfly are migrating to Sri Lanka from Dhanushkodi in India. So since statement 1 and statement 2 are incorrect and only statement 3 is correct, the correct answer here is option B 3 only. Now let us take up the last practice prelims question. This is also a two statement question two statements regarding spent fuels is given we have to find the correct ones let us take up the first statement it is a nuclear fuel that is removed from a nuclear power or research reactor following irradiation let us take up the second statement it is highly radioactive and it also generates lot of heat see from our discussion we can infer that both the given statements are correct so since both the statements are correct the correct answer here would be option c both one and two The main question based on today's discussion is here write the answer and post it in the comment section Actually I received two answers for my last discussion I was little busy so I was not able to evaluate it what I will do is I will go today and evaluate the answers okay sorry for the delay If you like today's discussion like comment and share it with your friends and for more updates regarding UPSC preparation subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel thank you